Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. In this lesson, we're going to start talking about loops uh, in algorithms using Nazi Schneiderman diagrams. So, what is a loop? So, so far in this list of instructions, you can see for uh, my breakfast routine, um, making a peanut butter bread and eating it. Uh, it's the whole thing. There is no loops. So you from the start, you just go down to the end in one straight line. There is no repeating something over and over. It's just start number one, number two, number three, number 10, done. All right. So what I want to do is show you guys a way of repeating the same thing over and over. So for example, let's say you get to step three. And then step three, four, and five, you're going to repeat it. So you're going to go step three, step four, step five, come back to step three, go to step four, go to step five, come back to step three. You're going to repeat the same thing over and over. So I want to talk about how to do that uh, in a Nazi Schneiderman diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a looping block. So you can see here is the looping block. So what is the looping block? The looping block tells you what the condition is that you have to satisfy in order to keep looping. So the condition we're going to satisfy, I'll just write it out first so you understand what, so you get a better idea of what I'm trying to say. So while there is still bread remaining is the condition. Okay, so you're eating some bread, you're eating the bread and the bread is reducing the amount because you keep putting it in your mouth. So as the bread reduces, uh, as the amount of bread reduces, if there is still some bread left, if you're still holding some bread in your hand, then I'm going to keep repeating doing the same action. So guess that what that action is going to be. That action is going to be you're going to keep eating the bread. OK, so I'm going to write eating the bread in here. I'm also going to write that I may be doing something else. Maybe I'm reading a book. All right. As long as there's some bread left, I'm going to keep eating it and I'm going to read a book. OK, so let's express that. So you can see here that I have put two more rectangles inside the looping block, eating the bread, reading the newspaper. And those are going to be the things that I keep doing as long as there's bread left. So what that means is as soon as this condition is no longer true, as soon as I finish eating the bread, I stop doing this. I'm not going to eat anymore. I'm not going to read it anymore. It's done. OK, and then I move on to the next part of the flow chart. OK, so the next part of the flow chart, I could say, for example, uh, change into work clothes, into work clothes. And that's the next bit. OK, so after I finish looping, uh, just make the rectangle fit a little bit better. After I finish looping, uh, finish eating the bread, all right, change into work clothes, go to work or something like that. OK, so that is the breakfast routine done. I will just show you guys a numerical example of a loop so you guys can understand a little bit more about how this applies in a more of a programming or mathematical context. OK, so here is a mathematical example. I'm going to set X to the number one. So what that means is X is a symbol or a variable containing the number one. OK, so when in in algebra, in maths, when we talk about um, a variable, what that means is a letter that we can use to put whatever number we want inside it. OK, so for example, in um, when you're talking about area or perimeter, area of a rectangle is length times width length times width length is a variable width is a variable 
Okay, you can put whatever number you want in it, and that will give you a rectangle of different sizes. So here, I'm going to make up a variable called x, and x is just going to be the number 1. Okay, and then I'm going to write a little condition. I'm going to write a little condition. I'm going to say while x is smaller than uh, than 30. Okay, so I'm going to do something to x. And while it is smaller than 30, I'm going to keep doing it. What am I doing? Okay, I'm going to increase x. by 2 and then I'm going to display X on screen okay so this is very interesting all right there are some programming principles here we have to talk about but the first thing you need to understand is in programming unless we say display X on screen it's not displayed it's hidden in the background. The computer is calculating something in the background. It's not displaying it. Okay, so X is hidden in the computer, in the memory. X is originally 1. While it is smaller than 30, so which is true right now because X is only 1, so it's smaller than 30. I increase X by 2, so what that means is whatever X is right now, I plus 2 to it. So 2 plus 1. So x is now 3. All right, I'm going to write a little note here. x is now 3. Because 1 plus 2 is 3. Display on x on screen. So I'm just going to draw a little rectangle to represent the display. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little... This is not part of the not part of the um, Nazi Schneiderman. This is the display, the monitor. Okay, so what is showing on the monitor? And it's just going to show initially the number three. All right, the number three is going to show on the screen because I have said for the program, to display X okay now notice we are still inside the loop we haven't finished the loop here we haven't got out of it because X is still smaller than 30 as long as X is smaller than 30 I will keep repeating this so I'm gonna increase X by 2 so 3 plus 2 is 5 display it so that's why you can see it right here I've displayed it so I'm just going to keep increasing it by 2 and displaying it until it is bigger than 30. And notice how I'm kind of doing it very slowly because I'm a human. If it was the computer, this will just all display within a millisecond or something like that. Okay, now here is the key. X is now 29. All right. So when x is 29, it's still smaller than 30. So I will still increase it by 2. So now it's 31 and I'm going to display it on the screen. And then I stop because I will test whether it's smaller than 30. And when it is not, I'm not going to do this anymore. Okay, so that concludes our... Uh, Nazi Schneiderman um, tutorial on loops. Basically, while something is true, you keep doing it until it is no longer true. Then you stop. Then you stop and you finish the program or finish the loop. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.